At the end of the school year, when the yearbooks arrive, you open a yearbook and you see the vibrant pictures and the trends of the year and think, wow, I made that. It takes a lot of hard work and hundreds of hours to get the book completed. But before we can start creating the yearbook, we will need to learn about the tools, menu, and workspace of Page Editor. On the left, we have the tools. Up on the top is the menu bar, and on the right, we have the palettes. First, we are going to learn about the tools. At the top of the page, we have Undo and Redo. These tools help you remove or repeat your recent actions. Next is the Selection tool. When using the Selection tool, you can select, move, and resize an object. After the Selection tool, we have the Text tool. The Text tool creates text boxes by clicking and dragging on the page. When editing text on the page, you need to make sure that this tool is selected. The Draw tool is right under the Text tool. You are able to draw angled or curved freeform objects. After creating your object, you can also make that object a placeholder, which means you can add a picture in that shape. This tool is the Shapes tool. There are a variety of shapes to choose from. Not only can you choose a shape to add to your spread, but you can also make it an image placeholder just like the Draw tool. Once you click on the shape, it will appear in the center of the page editor. You can then move that shape around and resize as needed. The next tool you will be using is the pan tool. This tool helps you move the spread around by clicking and dragging. This is good when you are zoomed in and need to work on another part of the page. After the pan tool, we have the zoom tool. There are more than one way you can zoom in. One way is by clicking the page multiple times. The other is by clicking your mouse down and creating a box over what you'd like zoomed in. There are two ways you are able to zoom out. Right under the zoom tool, there is a number with a percent symbol. You can click on the down arrow and choose a percentage of your workspace you'd like to see. To the right of that, there is the fit to page button. When you click on it, it will turn the page back to its original setting. Toward the bottom of the tools, we have the text, fill, and border buttons. With those, you are able to change the color of the text, add a color to your shapes, as well as create a border on your text or shapes. Now this completes the tools section of online design. Next, we will move on to the menu bar. The first item on the menu bar is the file tab. Like most file tabs, you are able to save and close your spread. You can also create a PDF or restore a previous version of your work. Next to the file tab, we have edit, where we are also able to undo and redo, as well as delete, select, and check spelling. In the menu bar, we also have object and view. Under the Object tab, you are able to group objects as well as make text an object. The reason why you'd want to convert text to an object is so that way you can add a picture inside as well as make it bigger than the font size is available. Another good reason to make your text an object would be to have it run across the spread. If it stays as text, you would only be able to include it on one side. Under the View tab, you can show guides, the bleed bar, and sticky notes. The last two items on the menu bar are save and close buttons. I usually use these because it's faster than selecting file and clicking on save and close. Of course, you can decide which ones you'd like to use. Now that we have seen the menu bar, we will be looking at the palettes. The first palette is the object palette. When you have an object selected, it will show you the dimensions of the object. You can also add a border and rotate your object as well. The next palette is the Type Palette. In order to use the Type Palette, the Text tool must be selected. Here, you are able to choose your font and size as well as change your letting and kerning on your text. You can also select a pre-selected font for your body copy, headlines, and captions, which will already be preset by the advisor or editor. Under the Type Palette, 
we have the photo palette where you are able to add effects and edit your photo. Then we have the layout palette where you can align your placeholders and text. You can also do a wrap text around images as well. The final palette we have is the effects palette where you can add shadows as well as change the transparency of objects. The final tabs I will go over are the portraits, template, click art, and backgrounds tabs. Once the student portraits are uploaded, you have access to them here in the portrait section. Templates for your spread can be selected through the template tab. There are pre-made templates as well as customized templates that you can add. There is also click art images that can be used. Usually they are used in elementary books. And finally, the backgrounds tab has pre-selected backgrounds that you can add to your spread. Depending on our theme, we will then decide on our background. I hope this micro learning video helps with understanding the tools we will be using to create our book. For the next video, I will show you how to upload and create folders for images.